Well, good day, guys, and welcome back to the channel. Now, if you've been following my adventures for any time, you'll know that I'm not a big fan of top cases or top boxes. In fact, I actually said this about them. Putting one of those on your bike is like putting a pair of these on your feet. <laughs> But circumstances change. Um, I'm carrying a lot of camera gear. I've got a drone, I've got three GoPros, I've got a handheld DJI, all the battery gear that goes with it. And uh, you're not gonna fit that in a tank bag. The other thing is, yeah, I do have a long rider duffel bag, but you know, it's held on with straps and you could easily take that, you know, four straps and you're off down the road with all my gear. Um, so unfortunately, I've had to consider getting a top case. Now, Lone Rider are actually developing one at the moment, but I don't think it's gone into production. We're at the end of 2023, and it probably isn't going to be around until mid-2024. So I thought I'd jump onto AliExpress and see if I could find something that's half decent just to tide me over. That's when I came across this. This is the 45 litre top case from Kemi Moto. Anyway, if you're thinking of going the way that I'm going and getting a top case or a top box, stay tuned with me whilst I do a quick review. Okay, so thanks for staying tuned and let's get right into it. So I jumped onto AliExpress and I typed in motorcycle top case box and um, there was a raft of boxes that came up. There are literally hundreds and hundreds, but most of them seem to be based around the same design. They're kind of a knockoff BMW or Touratech copy. Um, Kemi Moto, that's this one, that came out right at the top. Now, maybe that's because they pay to have their, their one listed right at the top, or maybe because it's of the amount of units that have been sold. So I jumped onto their advert for this one, and um, yeah, there was literally hundreds and hundreds that have been sold. I uh, scrolled down through the reviews, and most of the reviews were fairly positive. There was a few in there that were a bit iffy, but nothing that would put me off buying the box. All right, so let's talk about costs first before we actually show you the box. So I think I paid about two, this is all Australian dollars, mind you, so $205 roughly for the box. Um, I paid something like 50 bucks uh, Australian for shipping, which wasn't too bad from China because it's quite bulky. Uh, and then, yep, the tax man got his chunk out of that, so I got $25 on top of that as well. So, round all up around about 305, 310, I can't do the math right now. Um, but the shipping was pretty good. It came uh, within less than two weeks. Obviously, you know, if you're buying from the US or the UK, it might take a little bit longer. It came in a, a really good sturdy cardboard box. It was bubble wrapped inside and there was no damage to the box uh, or any of the, um, the fasteners or accessories that came with it. It was all in perfect shape. It was delivered and dropped on my front porch here by a courier. Camera recording. I was just joking. So let's talk about the requirements, my requirements for a top case or top box. Um, first off, it needed to be lockable. That's a no-brainer, which it is. There's two locks on this. One to lock the lid down 
and one to lock the box to the to the base uh, mounting plate. Sorry, that's what I'm trying to say in a really bad way. So that was the main criteria. Second, I didn't want something that was too big. I didn't really need to be able to fit a helmet in there because I don't see the point in that. If you're going somewhere and it's full of gear and you get off the bike, how can you put your helmet in? But some people, you know, that might be a requirement. Perhaps you commute to a dodgy place. It's almost empty. You get off the bike, you throw your helmet in there and um, lock it up and there you go. You don't have to carry your helmet around and you don't need to chain it to your bike. So that might be a requirement for me, uh, for you, sorry, but it, it certainly wasn't for me. Um, second, it needed to be waterproof. Um, that's a no-brainer as well. More importantly for Australia, I wanted it to be dustproof in case I go down some trails or unsealed tracks. Uh, and third, it needed to be, and, and this is not in any particular order, third, it needed to be a quick release mechanism so I could take it off the bike when I, I didn't need to use it. As I said, I don't like the look of them. Uh, and if there's a day that I can take it off and ride around without it and maybe put a small tail pack on, I'd rather do that instead. So let's talk about the construction of the box and the materials that are used. Um, at first glance, it seems like a really sturdy box. It's made out of, it claims to be made out of aluminium or aluminum, depending on which country you live in and how you pronounce it. The corners have got this thick plastic. Now, I'm an engineer and we used to call this nylatron. I don't know if it is the same. It's some sort of polymer, but it is quite um, rugged and I wouldn't have any concerns about strapping things down to these points here. Um, the locks are pretty good. Um, they they latch quite well. Sorry, I don't have the key in there. There's the key. I've got to say, I'll try and see if I can focus on that. The key is pretty basic. The lock mechanism is pretty basic. Probably enough to deter, you know, um, some on-the-spot thief that's just going to have a quick go at it. But... I'm sure you could teach a monkey with a screwdriver to get into this thing if you really wanted to. Um, the, the key does both locks, the, the, the one that locks it to the base plate and the one that opens up the box. Under the key, there's a little button that's hidden out of the way. You push that up, lift the latch, pull it back and open the box. I'm not going to open the box yet. We'll save that one for a little bit later. So it comes with a couple of keys and it comes with all the mounting hardware. So the construction of the box, yeah, looks pretty good. There's some of these sort of thin alloy type tubes on the side where you could also lash things down there as well. Um, has to be said, if, you, if you've got a helmet with you, you can actually secure it to that with a, say, bicycle lock or something like that. Uh, let's talk about the fasteners. Now the fasteners, the, the fasteners, the nuts and bolts, the clamps, that's what really let down this, this box. Overall quality, I think it's pretty good for the money. But the fasteners are your typical cheap chinese alloy. You only have to look at them and you'll strip the bolts, you'll round off the Allen heads, they come loose. There's um, nylock in a couple of these and they came loose the first time I was out there. So that is really, really disappointing. So in the same package as the fasteners or the nuts and bolts and clamps, you also get a couple of tools. Um, there is a, an Allen key, okay, and that, that is super cheap quality. I rounded mine off and bent it straight away. And second, you get this mini sort of spanner or wrench, depending on where you live. And I, I have to say, don't bother including it. These guys give you a better spanner. So my advice to you, Kemi Moto, is don't even bother including it. You know, if you buy a Lone Rider set of Moto bags, they send you a proper 
ratchet ring um, wrench or spanner. It's actually pretty good quality. You send this thing that is, it's just laughable. Don't put it in there, you are cheapening your product. Stick to what you're good at, making the case, and improve your fasteners, okay? You're gonna get a lot less feedback or negative feedback. All right, let's move on and look at the inside of this bad boy. Now, a quick word of warning before we go ahead and open the case. I don't know what chemicals are being used out in China, but before you open this, make sure you've either got a mask on or you do it at arm's length. Crikey, that really does stink. Anyway, what I did is leave the box in my garage with the lid open for a couple of days and finally the, the smell sort of died down. It's still there, to be honest. I don't think it's ever going to go, but it's nowhere near as bad as it was when I first opened it up. Okay, let's dare to stick our head in there again. All right, when you have a look inside the box, you'll see that it's got a quite a good solid padded interior although it does look like the inside of some gangster rapper's crib. Uh, if you can see past that, you can see actually it's well, you know, the stitching's pretty good. You get a couple of storage boxes in here, um, sorry, storage pockets, and they even include some sticker, reflective stickers that you can stick on the box. I'll leave them in there. I'm not sure if I'm gonna do that. Think I was joking about the spanner? Well, I've actually just found it in there. Look at that. Really? Do you think you're doing yourself any favours by including that? And there's the tiny little Allen key. It's not worth including. So that's the outside and the inside of the box. Let's talk about fitting it to the bike. So when Posty drops off your package and you open that up, as I said, it is quite well padded. There's a lot of bubble wrapping in there and there's a little um, leaflet that has some fitting instructions. It's pretty basic. There are no torque specifications for your bolts. There's nothing in there. It's just a diagram with some arrows. So, you know, people don't fit these right. That's on you, Kemimoto. You need to put in some more precise fitting instructions. Okay, the next thing we'll do is remove the box from the bike. So we unlock the lock, obviously, push the little button down there, pull down this clamp, pull that back, and then what we do is slide the box backwards. So hopefully you can see that you've got four little brackets underneath and they correspond with the four studs on the mounting plate. I'll just drop the camera down just to make sure you can see that. So these are your four studs. They've got little slots in and this, these brackets slide over the slots. You push it all the way over and drop that onto this clamp here. Push it forward, turn the key and it's locked on. Okay, so let's talk about the fitting of the plate onto your uh, rear luggage rack of the GS or whatever bike you're going to put it on. Uh, this mounting plate has got a multitude of different slots. It comes with a little clamping bracket. I'll see if I can find a picture of that. So that goes underneath. You put your bolt through and there's some nylocks and you tighten everything up. I'm going to remind you here, and I'm going to keep saying this, Kemimoto, there are no uh, bolt or nut torque specifications. So you can't expect your clients to know how tight or how much to tighten these up, all right? If there's no specification. We don't want to over tighten them because the quality is poor and you will strip a bolt or you might even shear a bolt. So that's that's my main gripe with the, with this box. And I'm gonna expand on that in a little, uh, in a short while. Okay, so as I mentioned, to lock the box on the bike, there's a latch here. And that round bar from the latch goes over this little bracket, okay, which is adjustable with two nuts and bolts with nylocks. 
and you slide that in and out and you've got to get it just right so you can just clear the box. Now, you might be looking at this little piece of paracord and be wondering what the heck is that doing on there? So this is where my um, tales of war start. As I said, there's no specifications and the instructions are really basic. So you've got to just use your common sense. <laughs> and as you know, common sense isn't very common these days. Maybe that remark's pointed at me. So I set the box up. Um, the mounting plate is on there rock solid. I've got no problem with that at all. As I said, no torque specification on these. And I set this up to what I thought was the right, um, the right fit. Now, first time down the road, I set off. It was a couple of k's from uh, my house and my partner on the back. We set off from the traffic lights. This thing had worked loose and the bike shot, the box shot off backwards and ended up in three lanes of traffic. Now, lucky, luckily for me, we, we had a, a kind bystander in a car who actually drove in front of the box or the top case and stopped the traffic from running over it because I had my camera gear in it, we had a, my partner's handbag, a wallet, and so on and so on. Okay, so it could have been a really bad situation. So we talk about the box after that. It sustained a bit of damage, but it actually fared quite well. As I said, it's, the construction's pretty good. Obviously, we've got scuffs on all the corners because it tumbled down the road, and I've got a dent on the top and some scratches. So, what did I do? I got in touch with Kemi Moto. I tried their customer support. I tried leaving a message, um, and this was the sort of, this is how frustrating it was. Would you just let me? So I got absolutely nowhere with them. I just get this message backwards and forwards and they even had the audacity to say it might be scratched, scratched and dented, but you can still use it. Well, yeah, it's still functional, but would you be happy? Would your CEO of Kemi Moto be happy if he bought a car uh, and it was scratched because of a manufacturing fault or lack of instructions? And the response is, you can drive around in that scratched car. That's just not acceptable. I'm sorry. So look, Kemi Moto, if you want to replace the box or, or pay me out a, a refund, then fine. I'll do another review, okay? But send me some good fasteners. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my hardware store. And I'm sorry if I'm, I'm getting a bit emotional here because I've paid good money for this box. And I'm very disappointed in your lack of customer support and lack of understanding. Anyway, I'm gonna go, I don't wanna take any chances, I'm gonna go down to my hardware store, replace all the hardware on this. Now, let's go back to this little, wherever it is, little piece of paracord. You might be wondering what that's for. Um, I don't wanna take any chances with this box, and until I get this hardware sorted, definitely don't wanna take any chances. But I'm going to probably leave this on anyway. So what I've done is I've put a little piece of paracord around there. I've got myself a stainless steel carabiner, just a small carabiner. I put that on the back there. And then I just pass that through the frame of my motorcycle rack, my adventure rack, not the mounting plate. So if everything goes pear-shaped again and the fasteners fail, okay, until I can repair them, or replace them, then this is gonna prevent it from sliding backwards. Because other than that little bracket, there's just nothing to stop it doing that. Anyway, sorry if I'm starting to rant a little bit. As I said, it gets me quite angry when you spend good money on things. And not only that, this gives AliExpress a really bad reputation. So you can go on any Facebook group, people will ask, what's AliExpress like to buy from? Some people say, great, I've had a great experience, but others will repeat what I've said. The total lack of understanding. Anyway, that's it, rant over. Yes, I'm gonna persevere with the box because I've paid for it and you guys, Kemi Moto, aren't gonna replace it or do anything about it. The review's gonna stand up there 
um, for everybody to see. And as I said, I'm not affiliated. It's a totally independent review. And that's just my opinion. Okay. Anyway, I'll go and I can get a coffee and try and calm down a little bit. If you've enjoyed the review, well, don't forget to leave me a comment below and um, drop me a cheeky like if you've liked it or, or leave me a thumbs down if you think I'm out of order. Let me know if you think I'm out of order, okay? Other than that, uh, if you have enjoyed it and you want to carry on watching my adventures, then please do leave me a cheeky subscribe. Don't bugger off without doing so. What is your major malfunction, num nuts? And as always, that's it for, for me, and uh, ride safe, and uh, have a great day. Yeah, you're right. I talk too much. I also listen too much. I could be a cold-hearted cynic like you. But I don't like to hurt people's feelings. Well, you think what you want about me. I'm not changing. I like me. My customers like me. Because I'm the real article. What you see is what you get.